Hey there, Prakash again. I am one of the co-founders and the co-CEO of Xano. In this Connect series, we're going to be talking about how we can connect Bubble to Xano. Now, Bubble is one of the most established no-code players in the market today. Uh, they have a back-end and front-end capability. You can build your entire application. We do have a lot of users that want to use uh, Xano's powerful, scalable back-end alongside Bubble. So we'll just show you how to make those connections today. And that's bubble.io. So let's actually just start in um, in Xano. So in, in our Xano uh, demo workspace, I have uh, two very simple database tables. I have a users table with just me as a user, and then I have a products table with two products. If I go to my API, I can also see that I have all of the API endpoints that Xano generated for authenticating the user, for getting uh, the products and editing it, and also uh, for editing and adding users. So if I want to connect these to Bubble, uh, we're going to go to a Bubble project. And the first thing that we're going to want to do is actually use a plugin called their Bubble API connector. So I'm going to click plugins right here. I'll click add a plugin. And then uh, it's, it's right over here. It's one of the most popular ones. So I'm going to click install. And so that's going to install it. I'm going to click done. And it should look a little something like this. So here what we want to do is I want to click add another API, right? And I'm just going to call this uh, the Xano API. And then I will click add another API call, right? And, or actually, let me start with this first one. I'll get rid of this one. I didn't even see this one over here. This first API call, what we'll do is we'll use the get products API endpoint. And this is an API endpoint that you query the database products and you get all the products, so these two products over here. So created at name, description, and ID. So the way we connect it is we select the uh, API endpoint. We then go back to Bubble, and I'll just call this, um, I'll call this get, why can't I change this? Oh, I need to expand it first. All right, so I'm gonna call this get products, okay? It's a get command. I'll paste in that URL. And for get commands with no parameters or no authorization, it's pretty straightforward. I need to just initialize the call to tell Bubble the structure of it. And then we're pretty much done. So I'm going to initialize it. It's going to show me, see that denim jacket, jacket. It shows me the keys. All of this is looking good. I can change the types if I wanted, but this looks all good. So I'm going to click save. So that's all done, the get products API uh, endpoint. I'm gonna go ahead and add another uh, API call. So we just did a list of products. Let's get an individual product. Uh, so I'll just say get single product, okay? So here it's still a get command and let's go to the API uh, or APIs in Xano and I'll go to get single product. So this is get product by ID. And this one takes an ID from the front end, right? So if I run a debug, you can see that it asks for a product. So the first thing I wanna do is copy the endpoint URL. I'll go ahead and paste it over here. And then uh, what it's going to ask me is uh, the parameters. So first I need to, it says I need to use the brackets for parameters. So I wanna go ahead and change it to that because that'll do the, pro uh, the parameters right over there. I'm gonna go ahead and um, I could paste in a value here. So let me just go ahead and do number one, which is jacket, and I'm gonna uncheck private, okay? So now that I've done that, I need to initialize this API call and you can see that it's getting that denim jacket. That's how I would just get uh, a single item over here, all right? Another thing uh, some people have asked is like, what if there's more than one input? Um, so for example, we just did a single product. What if I wanted to log in a user, uh, and which takes an email and a password? Well, let's just go ahead and do that right now. So I'll add another API call and I'll just call in, I'll call this login user. So then I'll go back to Xano over here um, and I have an API endpoint called auth login, right? This takes an email and a password, and then it passes back an authentication token. So I'm the only user in the database. My password's password123. If I run this over here, you can see it passes back an authentication token, which we can then use to log in, which we'll show you uh, shortly. But for the meantime, let's go ahead and first take this endpoint URL, login user, and it's not a get anymore, it's a post, right? And you can see the method is over here, post. So I wanna paste this. And then I want to change this use as data. I want to change this to action because I want, why I want to use it in an action when I'm building my workflows here within Bubble. So I just changed that uh, to actions. 
So then here you can see that it says add the body, right? Because there's more than one uh, query parameter that it's going to need for the post. So uh, easy way to do this is just to go back to Xano, click run and debug, and you can see um, that the uh, parameters that we basically are gonna pass are here in this uh, JSON format. I'll just copy this over here and I will paste it. And then uh, Bubble actually says that it requires uh, these arrows for dynamic values. So I'll go ahead and I'll do this, right? And I'll just call this email. I could do the same name as the key over here. And then I'll do this as password. Okay, so I just did email and password. Um, I'm going to unselect private for both of these. And it's going to need real values from an actual user. So um, I'm going to do prakash at email.com. And then the password, I will do password123 because that is an actual user and their password. Now, when I initialize it, just like uh, I did in Xano, I should get an authorization token back because that's what I use to pass to different authenticated endpoints. And just so you know, like when you're authenticating with uh, JWE tokens, which is like 80 to 90% of all logins in the internet, they always pass you a token. That token is then used to verify like, hey, this is Prakash that's logging into the front end. And then you use that token to each authenticated endpoint you want to access. So uh, let's initialize this call. And you can see I get that long authentication token back. So I know that this is working. So I'll click save. So, so far, let's just review what we've done real quick. We've named this Xano API. We've done get products, which is a list of product. We can, we've done get a single product using a, uh, a URL parameter, right? And we've used these brackets over here. Um, and then we've done login user and we've uh, passed that JSON payload of taking in an email and a password. And now the final thing that we're gonna do is we are going to do an authenticated endpoint. So if I go back to Xano, let's actually change um, this get products one. Right now it's, uh, unlocked, meaning there's no authentication, I'll change it to locked, right? So if I go here and I try to run it, you can see that it's requiring that I pass an authentication token. So the way that we would set this up in bubble is um, we're going to do add another API call and I'll just call this Xano uh, login. Okay. Here, remember, we want to change this to an action. We're going to change this to a post and uh, we are gonna go to Xano, we're gonna take this URL, okay? Or actually, no, sorry about that, this is a get, I'm getting this. So I'm gonna get this uh, products URL, but because it requires authentication, you know, I need to basically uh, add in headers. So what if I decided not to do this? I'm gonna show you what happens. I'll go to initialize call and it should say something like authentication required. There it goes, yeah, uh, unauthorized. Okay, got it. So I'm gonna add a header. And the way you do uh, authenticated endpoints is the key is authorization. And I'm gonna type in bearer. And bearer is a bearer token. It's that JWE example I gave. Uh, what it passes back is the bearer token. It is the token that says that it's Prakash. So, uh, and then I just need to paste in an example. So th that's really easy to get. I'll go back to Xano. I'll go to auth login and I will log in over here, right? Using this, these credentials. It's going to pass me back a token. I'll copy the auth token, go back to bubble, and I'll paste it in. So bearer, space, and then the auth token. And then I'll initialize the call. And it should then pass me back the product information. So we have now have like all of these critical API endpoints connected directly to Bubble. Now, there are other videos that we have around how you can display the data in Bubble. There's a lot more complex tutorials. But this should definitely get you started for how you connect a Xano backend to a bubble front end. Thanks, and we'll see you in the next video.